As a 40-year-old woman, I'm having a hard time worrying about a recent decision I've made about my family, and I'd like to get everyone's opinion. Eight years ago, my life was turned upside down when my husband, Roberto, suddenly announced that he was leaving me and the children. He met a hot girl online and fell in love with her. His decision came like a bolt from the blue and left me horrified. Roberto had been acting distant and strange for a few weeks before this discovery, but I chalked it up to work stress. We were married for over ten years and supported each other in everything. I knew him for half my life, and we built a family together. The possibility of cheating never entered my mind. One evening, Roberto finally admitted that he had met someone. These words broke my heart. He blurted out that the woman's name was Isabella, and she was the sexiest woman he had ever seen. He had been communicating with her for the past three months, and they had created a bond that made him realize his unhappiness in our marriage. Every word he said pierced me like a knife as I felt a mixture of anger and despair in my stomach. He continued to reassure me that he still loved us but could not deny his feelings for Isabella. He insisted that he needed to meet her in person to see where this would lead. I was overwhelmed by a whirlwind of emotions, unable to understand what was happening, and it felt like the walls of our house were caving in on me. My voice trembled when I asked him if he was leaving us and the children for this woman. He nodded slowly, saying that although he didn't expect me to understand, he needed to do this for himself. He has thought it through and is going to meet her, starting a new life. He said he was willing to support us financially as much as he could, but he needed to follow his heart and meet the love of his life. The world collapsed around me. I just couldn't believe that my husband was leaving me and our children for someone he had never met in person. My first instinct was to scream, beg, do anything to get him to stay. But, looking at his face, I realized that he had already made his choice, and there would be no return. Roberto moved out the following week, leaving me to explain to our children that their father was not coming back. Emily, nine years old asked a thousand questions, but I had no answers. Marcelo, only four years old, could not fully grasp the tragedy of the situation and held on to me as if he sensed something was going terribly wrong. During this time, I felt numb and destroyed, and my children were the only thing that kept me from drowning in my grief. When I first told my family about Roberto, they had the same reaction as me. They just couldn't understand why my husband would do something like that for so many years. My parents wanted me to take it up legally, but at that point in my life, I had little support, and I still believed that my husband would come back to us. Roberto's parents looked absolutely helpless and devastated when they found out that their son had left us. They called him many times, begging him to come back, but he told them the same story. Eventually, the days turned into weeks, weeks into months. I had to pick up the pieces, both for myself and for the children. Our families and friends gathered around us, offering support and a shoulder to lean on. I focused on finding a job to provide a stable environment for Emily and Marcelo, but the pain from my husband's betrayal remained. During this time, Roberto's parents helped me a lot, providing financial support and looking after the children if I needed a break. Many years have passed since then and Roberto's presence in our lives has dwindled to nothing more than a distant memory. Sometimes he sent us money, but other than that, he never contacted me or the children. Over the years, I have practically become a single mother, working tirelessly to provide for my children and give them the love and attention they deserve. While Emily sometimes remembered her father, she eventually stopped trying to contact him and learned not to bring up the subject. Unlike her, Marcelo's memories were vague, and he never even mentioned him. Despite the pain of losing their father, both grew into wonderful individuals. Roberto's father recently passed away unexpectedly, and we all attended his funeral. His family's lawyer later informed us that he wanted to speak to me regarding his will. The lawyer explained that Roberto's father left some money for his grandchildren. While it wasn't a huge amount, it could help pay for my children's college education. I gathered my children and shared with them the news that they would no longer have to worry about school expenses. 
Their faces beamed with joy, and seeing their happiness was truly touching. It feels like a weight has been lifted, knowing we have one less thing to worry about. A couple of days ago, I received a call from an unknown number. To my surprise, Roberto was on the other end. Conflicting emotions surged through me, and I was left speechless when I heard his voice after eight years. He hesitated before saying that he wanted to meet urgently. I was confused and asked him to clarify. He admitted that he wanted to discuss the proposal with me and begged me to meet with him. I couldn't understand why he was calling me now, after all these years, when he shouldn't have contacted me before anyway. His repeated pleas were hard to ignore, so I took a moment to collect my thoughts and finally agreed to meet him alone, albeit cautiously. The date was set, and we decided to meet at a cafe near my office as soon as I hung up. After the conversation, questions and uncertainties popped into my head, making me feel anxious about meeting after six years. I decided not to tell my children anything until I met with him to find out what his proposal was about. The days leading up to our scheduled meeting were a ride of emotions. I couldn't help but go back in time in my thoughts, remembering the pain of Roberto's sudden departure, the difficulties of raising children on my own, and the years of trying to come to terms with his abandonment. On the day of our meeting, I arrived early, nervously sipping coffee while waiting for Roberto. Not a moment had passed before he entered, approaching me with a mixed feeling of hesitation and determination. I noticed that he looked older, tired, and somehow different than the man I married. Our initial conversation was full of awkward silences and hesitant words. We avoided the elephant in the room, focusing instead on polite greetings and conversation about the years. It was as if we were two strangers trying to make sense of the remains of a past life. Eventually, Roberto gathered his courage and began to explain the reason for his sudden return to our lives. He said that Isabella was not the woman he took her for. It turned out that she herself was a single mother, but she never revealed this truth to him until he left us and stood in front of her door. Their relationship faced many difficulties, mainly due to her gambling addiction, which led her to squander his entire fortune. They often quarreled, but Roberto decided to stay with her, hesitating to give up someone else. However, when his father recently died, he realized how short life is to remain in an unhappy situation every day. He talked about how much he missed all of us and how disappointed he was with his election eight years ago. Roberto continued, saying that he had fought to return to us several times over the years but did not have the strength to face us. He then revealed that his father had bequeathed him their lake house, the same huge property where we used to go on vacation before Roberto left us. He told me he wanted to sell the house, which would allow him to secure himself for life. I nodded silently, listening to him. Roberto then threw a bomb. He offered to return to us and provide our children with a luxurious life. He assured me that I would never have to work again if I accepted him back into our lives. I looked at him in disbelief when he assured me that we could live the rest of our lives without worrying about money. Essentially, Roberto wanted us to make peace and give our family a second chance, using the inheritance to build a better life together. I weighed Roberto's words carefully, understanding the potential benefits that the inheritance could bring to our family. However, it was impossible to forget all those years he was away, leaving me alone to take care of our children. Despite the appeal of financial security, I couldn't ignore the pain and anger that had built up over the years of his absence. So I firmly told him that while I appreciated his offer, I simply couldn't forget the last eight years. I told him that I raised my children alone, caring for them and working. And although we may not have everything right now, we have a stable life. I told him I couldn't risk putting myself and my children through pain again. Roberto persistently tried to persuade me to change my mind his eyes full of despair, but I knew that if I allowed him back into our lives, I was risking the stability of our family. My heart ached a little from not accepting his offer, especially considering the financial relief it would have brought, but I couldn't ignore the emotional scars he left behind. Ever since I met Roberto, 
my parents have been insisting that I reconsider my decision to refuse his proposal. They tell me that after everything he put us through, at least now he could give me and our children a better life, free from financial worries and restrictions. My parents claim that people can change, and perhaps Roberto has realized his mistakes and really wants to restore our family. They think I'm selfish and want me to put my children's comfort before my pain. I spend many sleepless nights wrestling with my choices. I couldn't muster the courage to tell the children about Roberto's return. I worry about how they will react to this news and how they will process the idea of their father returning after eight years of absence. I question my own judgment, torn between the potential benefits of accepting Roberto's offer and the memories of our painful past. So Reddit, am I being selfish for turning down Roberto's offer and possibly depriving my children and us of a better life? In just a few days, I received thousands of comments and messages from people. I am glad that most of you do not consider me that fool. I listened to everyone's advice and decided it was time to openly communicate with my children about Roberto. The last thing I wanted was for him to suddenly appear in their lives suddenly capturing their attention. Today, after dinner, I sat down with Emily and Marcelo to carefully touch on this topic. I started telling them about their father's unexpected appearance and his offer to come back into our lives. Their faces showed a mixture of curiosity and confusion as they tried to understand what I was talking about. When I told them that he had inherited a lake house and wanted to sell it to help us financially, their reactions varied. Emily, now 17, showed a range of emotions from anger to shock. She was as confused as I was and couldn't understand why Roberto wanted to come back to us after so many years. While she remembered her father and missed him sometimes, she also remembered the pain she felt in his absence. She said that at first she missed a father figure in her life, but over time she learned to live without him and didn't want him anymore. Marcelo, now 12 years old, said he didn't remember Roberto at all, so he didn't care that I turned down the offer. He found it difficult to comprehend the full implications of this situation. I told them frankly that whatever they decide will happen because I respect their opinions and emotions. Emily expressed that she had absolutely no desire to meet him, and Marcelo agreed, saying that he was happy with the way things were. I realized that while the thought of possibly reuniting our family was appealing, the scars of the past ran deep and the well-being of my children was my top priority. I knew I made the right choice when I left Roberto that day in the cafe. Regarding this, I plan to discuss the next step with my parents. Contrary to popular belief, I never planned to stay married to Roberto, but he left before we could get a divorce. I didn't have the resources to stand up to him back then, but I've since realized there was no point in staying married to this man anymore. Roberto's calls had become increasingly desperate over the last few weeks, and despite my explaining that I didn't want him back, he kept calling. Being a non-confrontational person, I felt trapped and emotionally drained by his constant attempts to contact me. I was worried that he might suddenly show up at my workplace or visit the children at school, so I decided to contact his mother. She was aware of his return and seemed to be the only person who could help me understand his motives and deal with his persistence. I met with her to inform her of my decision to legally end my relationship with him and to express my irritation with his constant calls. It was during this conversation that his mother revealed the real reason for his persistence. She explained that Roberto's father had added a cleverly planned clause when he bequeathed his lakeside cottage. He could become the owner of the house only if he returned to our family. To secure my right to the house, I also had to sign documents. This discovery left me in shock and confusion. Finally, I understood why he had been following me for weeks. The main reason he contacted me was not out of a genuine desire to reconcile or mend his relationship with me, but to secure ownership of the house. The whole situation felt like a cruel manipulation of emotions, and I needed to carefully consider my next steps. After discovering Roberto's true intentions, I knew it was time to act. I didn't want to stay in the relationship anymore. 
driven by manipulation and secrecy, I am already looking for a lawyer to help me prepare to begin my divorce immediately. I also spoke with my parents, who regretted telling me to reconsider his proposal. They now understand that he hasn't changed over time and support my decision to move forward with the divorce. They regret that they once advised me to listen to him at all, and now they know that it is right to leave him. I blocked Roberto for a while so he couldn't bother me. I plan to meet with him directly once I provide him with the divorce papers. It's been two months since my last post, and I can finally happily announce the changes. As I mentioned, I was going to provide Roberto with divorce papers. So I contacted him under the guise of a meeting. He immediately agreed. Emily and Marcelo expressed their desire to see their father one last time. They had a lot of questions, and I felt it was important for them to get some closure despite the pain in the past. We arranged the meeting at a neutral location, a local park, where we spent many happy family moments before Roberto left. Emily's eyes were full of mixed feelings of curiosity and skepticism as she looked at her father, while Marcelo stood awkwardly next to me. I started by telling him that I now knew his real motivation for getting in touch after all these years. Roberto countered that it was not only a clause in his father's will that forced him to do this, but that he genuinely wanted us to give him a second chance. I shook my head in disbelief, knowing that I couldn't trust a word out of this man's mouth. I told him we were done and that at the very least he could give our kids some closure by answering their questions. He nodded solemnly. Emily started by asking him if he should have left us for another woman. Roberto looked down shamefully, replying that he was lost and had made a terrible mistake. Marcelo, with a more direct approach, asked him if it was more important for him to find his happiness than to leave his children with his wife. Roberto took a deep breath before answering that he was thinking out of his mind at that moment and admitted that he was wrong in leaving us. My children, sensitive and strong, were not satisfied with just these answers. Roberto tried to justify his affair by saying it was his midlife crisis. As the conversation continued, Roberto shared painful details of his life with Isabella, the difficulties they faced, and the realization that he was chasing an illusion. Emily and Marcelo listened intently, although I doubt they believed him. They asked him why he never kept in touch and if he really regretted leaving us. I felt the pain in my children's voices. Roberto admitted that he was overcome with guilt and did not know how to face the consequences of his actions. He emphasized that he wanted us to be whole again and that he could now provide us with a luxurious life. When I looked into my children's eyes, I knew the decision was clear. They didn't believe him, and neither did I, and they wouldn't let Roberto come back into our lives offering money as a quick fix for the damage he had caused. It was a matter of principle, of maintaining the strength and resilience that my children and I had shown during the eight years of his absence. Determinedly, I told him that we had moved on without him and no longer needed him or his money. I handed him the divorce papers and he looked at them with a mixture of remorse and disappointment. He begged me that he sincerely wanted to fix those years, but I was unshakable in my decision. He then offered to share the proceeds from the sale of the lake house with me, saying that this way we could both benefit. Emily said that we don't need his charity money, and Marcelo nodded in support, adding that we have everything we need to be happy. At this point, I think Roberto finally realized what a huge mistake he had made and began to cry. He apologized to the children, saying that he had made a terrible mistake by leaving us, and he understood that we would never forgive him. The day I left the park holding hands with Emily and Marcelo, I finally felt free. It never occurred to me how much of a burden I was silently carrying for my children. It was great to see my children protecting me and standing behind me. Our divorce will continue as I have decided. I know it will be a while before I'm legally free of him, but for now I'm planning on taking some time off to spend time with the kids. We're about to head to Disneyland, a trip we've been looking forward to for a long time. I want to create beautiful memories with my children, filled with laughter and joy, to soothe the painful memories of the past. I know that as long as we have each other, 
we can face what the future holds for us with strength and resilience. Despite the challenges and emotional difficulties we have faced, my children and I are on the path to healing, creating a new, stable, and honest life. This chapter is far from over, but now we will write our story, and I am determined to make sure it is filled with love, trust, and growth. Since my last post, I have exciting news for you. I got promoted at work, and it feels like a huge achievement. It took me a long time to reach this position, but I am finally earning a comfortable income that allows me to provide even more for my family. The promotion brings not only financial stability, but also the satisfaction of knowing that my hard work and dedication paid off in the end. Things are going well with the divorce. I hired an excellent lawyer who, having learned the history between my husband and I, is confident that the divorce will go smoothly. Although this may not be a simple process, it is necessary for our completion and new beginning. My family and friends stood by my side during this time, providing support. Now that I earn more than enough, I plan to send my children to the rappy. I understand that my children may have problems with feelings of abandonment so that they can better process their emotions and overcome any remaining problems. I am looking for professionals with experience working with these issues and have found a vigilant and experienced therapist who specializes in helping children and families cope with complex emotions. In the meantime, as a parent, I believe in encouraging the exploration of my children's interests outside of academics. My daughter Emily has an amazing talent for art and spends hours creating beautiful paintings to decorate our home. My son Marcelo has always had a natural talent for football and we spend weekends at his games supporting him. It makes me proud to see my children flourish in their lives. As for Roberto, we don't keep in touch, and I think that's best. As many of you guessed correctly, his con girlfriend, Isabella, unexpectedly contacted me one day. The message was not an apology, as one would expect from a woman who was different, but rather anger and resentment at the fact that I was supposedly taking Roberto away from her. She blamed me for the breakdown of their relationship and blamed me for being the reason he left. In her messages, Isabella expressed indignation and anger, calling me names and making accusations. She questioned my motives and claimed that I had manipulated Roberto into returning to our family. The messages were aggressive and disturbing, and I couldn't help but feel how overwhelming her anger was. I found it hard to believe that this woman had the nerve to be angry at me when she was the reason my family broke up eight years ago. I responded to her by stating that I had no desire to be with Roberto and that I was in the process of getting a divorce. I reminded her of the pain and confusion my family went through when Roberto left us for her and told her that she had no right to contact me. I emphasized how our lives had been turned upside down all those years ago and how my children had suffered as a result. I made it clear that I never wanted him back, and if she needs to blame anyone, then she should blame herself and her gambling addiction. I blocked her after I messaged her, and hopefully she won't try to contact me further. I don't want her to destroy the little world that I created for myself and my children. As for Roberto's mother, sometimes I talk to her because she has always been kind to me. She expresses regret about how things turned out and wants me to do everything possible for my happiness. Interestingly, she also said that because of my decision not to reunite with Roberto, the Laika house would not go to him, as his father had intended. This discovery was unexpected, although deserved. This man's selfish decisions have destroyed not only our family, but another as well, so he is left to suffer. It's time to move forward and leave the past behind. I know we have a difficult road ahead, but the healing process is already in full swing. My children are growing and thriving, and our future is getting brighter every day.